First reading, a reading from the second book of Kings, chapter 19, verse 9 to 11, 14 to 21, and verse 31 to 36. Word reached the Assyrians that the Egyptian army, led by King Terhaka of Ethiopia, was coming to attack them. When the emperor heard this, he sent a letter to King Hezekiah of Judah to tell him, the God you are trusting in has told you that you will not fall into enemy hands. But don't let that deceive you. You have heard what an Assyrian emperor does to any country he decides to destroy. Do you think you can escape? King Hezekiah took the letter from the messenger and read it. Then he went to the temple, placed the letter there in the presence of the Lord and prayed, O Lord, God of Israel, seated on your throne above the winged creatures. You alone are God, ruling all the kingdoms of the world. You created the earth and the sky. Now, Lord, look at what is happening to us. Listen to all the things that Sennacherib is saying to insult you, the living God. We all know, Lord, that the emperors of Assyria have destroyed many nations made their lands desolate, and burned up their gods, which were no gods at all, only images of wood and stone made by human hands. Now, Lord, our God, rescue us from the Assyrians, so that all the nations of the world will know that you, O Lord, are God. Then Isaiah sent a message, telling King Hezekiah that in answer to the king's prayer, the Lord has said, the city of Jerusalem laughs at you, Sennacherib, and makes fun of you. There will be people in Jerusalem and on Mount Zion who will survive, because the Lord is determined to make this happen. And this is what the Lord has said about the Assyrian emperor. He will not enter this city or shoot a single arrow against it. No soldier with shields will come near the city, and no siege mounds will be built around it. He will go back to the same road he came, without entering this city. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will defend this city and protect it, for the sake of my own honor and because of the promise I made to my servant David. That night an angel of the Lord went to the Assyrian camp and killed 185,000 soldiers. At dawn the next day, there they lay, all dead. Then the Assyrian emperor Sennacherib withdrew and returned to Nineveh. The Word of the Lord Dear brothers and sisters and my dear children, he who chooses the beginning of a journey or the beginning of a road chooses the place it leads to. Try to understand what this means. By reflecting on the day's gospel, Jesus will lead you to heaven or to believe in his word and to choose and to choose the right way that we should walk on. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Do not give what is holy to dogs. They will only turn and attack you. Do not throw your pearls in front of pigs. They will only trample them underfoot. Do for others what you want them to do for you. This is the meaning of the law of Moses 
and of the teachings of the prophets. Go in through the narrow gate, because the gate to hell is wide, and the road that leads to it is easy. And there are many who travel it, but the gate to life is narrow, and the way that leads to it is hard. And there are few people who find it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, and my dear children, today you and me, Jesus gives to both of us a choice whether to choose the narrow gate or the wide gate. What is this narrow gate means? Why Jesus uses this metaphor? Well, normally those days, that is about 2000 years ago, the cities were surrounded by ramparts or a big wall kind of. And only the human beings can enter through the small gates that were there. So the camels, which was there, the normal mode of transport, the camels were kept outside the gate and only the people or the human beings could enter the narrow gate. So that's why Jesus used this example to show the way to heaven. How difficult it is to live a Christian life and to choose the Christian life. It's not the easy way. So there are two ways. Easy way or the hard way to eternity. But there's no easy way to eternity. That's what Jesus says. It's the cross that leads to the heaven. Let me say, dear brothers and sisters, as I said in the introduction, he who chooses the beginning of a road chooses the place it leads to. Just try to understand this. If you choose the wrong ways in life, there's no turn back or no U-turn. No stops either. No stopping. But you have to make a drastic change. The only hope is to change the road or the change away through repentance. This is what Jesus says. Expecting easy life from God is not Christianity. This is the meaning of the cross, dear brothers and sisters. For Jesus, the life was not easy as a human being. Jesus, is, he was on this earth. He was the incarnate God. But for him, life was not easy. Neither he chose the easy life to take all of us to heaven. And he has given us the only way is the way through the cross. The easy way can lead us, dear brothers and sisters, to destruction. Sometimes we think that the presence of God is there, only we find something easy in our lives. No, it's not so. Try to choose the narrow gate. Narrow gate is the life of faith with Jesus Christ, nothing else. And to live this faithful life or to live this faith is not easy in this world. There were the martyrs. It's through the blood of the martyrs that the church was built. If not for the blood that they shed, there's no church with such strength and with such blessings from our Heavenly Father. So it's a choice to all of us, whether you live our own way, which is the easy way, or to live the life with faith in Jesus Christ, which will lead us to everlasting life. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters, and may God bless you.